All right. What's going on, Flix Talkers, Flix Talk fam? Welcome back to another week of Lovecraft Country. It is episode four. It is called The History of Violence. I have my special guest once again, Elliot from Movie Files and Q Reviews. What's going on, fellas? How are you doing this Sunday? Good, man. Good. Yeah, and we were just talking about we were just talking about that this uh, episode got released a little earlier, and we're thinking because of Labor Day weekend. So I think a lot of people have already kind of seen this one and. Uh, History of violence, man. Um, uh, we there was a lot going on in this episode, so I don't even know where to start. But what were your initial thoughts after watching this episode? It left off <laughs> on something crazy uh, mm. from Montrose, which we'll get into. Which I was like, no. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so we'll get into it. But what, you, what were your initial thoughts just uh, before getting into details, Elliot? Uh, mm. After watching episode four. Yeah, I mean, so far from the first four episodes, this has been the, for me at least, the only one that's had like a, like direct lead in from episode three to four. Like we picked up like immediately yeah. after the events versus like one and two, it was like three months and or like three weeks later and then a month later in episode three. So I, I definitely like that we, we got that connective tissue. But yeah, overall mm -hmm. thoughts, man, it was fun. That's the thing, right? All these shows, these episodes so far, three episodes in, has been pretty heavy with the, you know, obviously the racism that's going on and, and some of the brutality of the monsters. But this one was just like a fun, classic Indiana Jones meets Goonies, meets Pirates, meets Journey to the Center of the Earth. It was just a fun ride. And again, the thing about this show that I love is we don't see the black audience or the black uh, uh, um, uh, characters having adventure journeys like this. So it's always fun mm -hmm. that they're adding these new layers and telling these black stories and, and having these awesome characters go through some adversity uh, and, and finding uh, a treasure and finding these words from the book of Adam. So I, I, I really had a fun time with this episode. Yeah, most definitely. Mm -hmm. Q, what were your thoughts on, uh, on this episode for history of violence? Yeah, I'm trying to see is, this my favorite episode or sundown now so far this was mm. a really well put together episode especially mm -hmm. when we get yeah. down into the museum the museum stuff literally i was on the edge of my seat like playing like uncharted trying to get that cliff you know what i'm saying <laughs> grab, grab that cliff like oh man are gonna make it look what are they gonna do you know like yeah like you said with the whole uh raiders of the lost ark uh, you know, national treasure thing. I thought it was so yeah. well done and put together. Production value, once again, was on 10 on this one. Out of all the episodes, I think mm -hmm. production value on this one just blew it out of the water. You know what I'm saying? I really yeah. enjoyed this episode. Like Elliot said, it, it, it was fun too. Not too too heavy, but still, um, I seen the danger and the stakes in play out here. I was like, oh yeah, the stakes are here. You know what I'm saying? They, someone could mm -hmm. die. So yeah, I really enjoyed this episode, uh, History of Violence. I thought it was very well put together. Yeah, and it was interesting too. This episode out of all of them felt like the one that had the less... Uh, the least amount of like monster or ten tension base from people. It was more yeah. about going on that adventure, right? And uh, mm -hmm. we got more character development. We got um, more Montrose, like I was saying, like I wanted. And and he got a little different at the end. I mean, he had a change of like, almost like you did me yeah. proud, son. But he's totally fooling, pulling the wool over people's eyes. But the episode does start out with more Christina. And that's where we get that tie in, how you were talking about from the last episode where she lets uh, Letitia know, you know, he pulled the gun out on me and uh, she walks into that spell and there's, there's some of that magic going on and stuff. And it was interesting. Cause I feel like I got, uh, and then we saw, we saw, uh, what's his name? Will William or will William. again mm -hmm. in, in that episode, which he had a, <laughs> an interesting scene uh, with yeah. the sister. With the sisters, mm, so yeah, um, yeah, yeah, Ruby. yeah uh, but what yeah, do you guys yeah, think? Yeah. Uh, what, what do you guys think of uh, uh, more of the Christina role that we're getting? Because um, she makes it seem like she's she knows it's going. Uh, there's a lot like a. Uh, I think Chris was talking about it last week of the um, what are they called? Like the skull and bones, or like uh, those those type of societies of of men that have like uh, the cloaks and stuff. I forget what they're called. They're called the um, you guys know what I'm talking about. Secret in society type like, of deal. Oh, no, just yeah, like in general, I'm, like a secret society. Ma uh, for Freemasons. Freemasons Free is what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. So when she goes yeah. to uh, the police officer and he kind of like, you know, I'm not going to let, you know, you come and like ruin, you know, what's going on. He alludes to her being a woman. She can't, you know, be doing this stuff. And, you know, uh, so she, she, she has a grasp on this town and yeah. uh, things that are going on, it, it seems like. But what do you, what do you guys uh, mm -hmm. uh, feel in on, on her character uh, in this episode? 
Well, for me, I think it was very, and I and I mentioned it a couple weeks ago, but I think this show or this episode was very apparent that Christina is William, and William is Christina, uh, just mm-hmm. from the simple fact of the scene where we see her walk into the house, and William immediately comes walking out. We have yet to see them on the screen at the same time, mm-hmm. and I think the show also uh, with that creature or that that spirit uh, that was uh, both a man and a woman alludes to that as well. And then also, I hated the soundtrack of this episode; like I thought it was the yeah. most most jarring Thank music. You. The, I hated it. The yeah, score was you. dope because again, it was very Indiana Jones score, but I thought the soundtrack mm-hmm. was just really yeah. out of place. But yeah. um, the only yeah. song that fit within the episode, again, going back to my Christina William theory, is that Marilyn Manson song is called I Put a Spell on You. So I, I think, again, this show is really alluding to that Christina, and she can't get things done because she's a woman, hence, like yeah. David said, the, the scene with the cop. So I think this episode really proved, at least to me, that Christina is William and William is Christina, and they're one of the same characters. And Christina, all she did this episode is manipulate characters, especially Ruby. She thinks that William's a man, but it's really her, and she's going to be able to use Ruby to get that Ori uh, uh, object, which uh, Hippolyta mm-hmm. has. So I think Christina's continuing to w- working behind the scenes. And I think, uh, and Q said it too, I think a couple weeks ago, uh, there's definitely an Adam and Eve story going on. And I think Christina wants to maybe rewrite the past and have Adam eat the apple instead of for Eve eating the apple and really kind of changing the complexity of how we men and women perceive each other. Mm-hmm. Okay. Q, uh, what like do you think about what El- what Elliot said about the music? Um, was it yeah, jarring? Because that's, that's... What saying. yeah, man. Because as soon as it starts off, it's like, "Bitch, better have my money." Yeah, I was like, like, yeah. like, yo, um, like, what the fuck? What is going on here? Like, this doesn't match at all. You know what I'm saying? I can't, yeah. I can't, I, I, I can't get into it when it starts off like that. But lo- and then it, it just started off with like some more other trap music too. That it just mm-hmm. threw me off. Like yeah. it was like two modern songs back to back and then they yeah. kind of then they kind of slowed down a bit as they started to road trip so i was happy about mm-hmm. that but that that music man like i i i, I like the unique perspective of it or they try to do something different but it, it just don't fit they do that in that uh one show too uh with um uh uh forrest whitaker in it uh he plays bumpy johnson and they always playing like rick Ross. oh yeah the king of harlem <laughs> i think <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah the king of harlem like yo i don't I don't think Rick Ross was out at these times, son. But you know, it me <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It really, it really yeah. sucked me out. It's a timepiece. Yeah. It's like when you hear this modern music, it's really weird. Yeah, and it's just a disservice too, because like they, all these production people, you got all these cards and all these costumes and all this great stuff, and then you throw a modern. <laughs> Uh, Regatta song in it. It's like, no, like, no. And not to cut you off, but literally, it, the song makes no sense. Like, why? <laughs> yeah. you, what does that have to do with what's going on on the screen? It's like, yeah, yeah, if yeah. it was like Christine, if she was listening to that song on the radio, sure. Yeah. But yeah. it's like the mm-hmm. 1950s. This song makes mm-hmm. no sense. Yeah. And I got yeah. money. Like, yeah. Like, the I, I yeah. Into the bank. Like, like, like mm-hmm. what, the, what is going on? I, I really did d- d- dislike that in an episode, yeah. even though I liked this episode so much. Yes, yeah, that music was was terrible. And by the, like, yeah. And by the way, jump into that scene that you just talked about with uh, Ruby walking into that uh, retail store or whatever. I thought that was important <laughs> because she talks about how she applied for that job. Right. And then there was another woman that was obviously got the job because she was skinnier. Um, no, that, to me, that's what that's what I got away from it because she was also an African American woman, but she, but she was thinner than her, and she was like, "Did you just apply?" And she's like, "Yeah, I just applied, and they gave it to me." So I was like, "Hmm," and then she kind of just walked away, and she had like a look on her face, like, "Well, damn, I've been trying to get this job for a long time, you know." And I think even Letitia said that she was going to try to apply. I think like in the first episode or something like that, or second episode. But uh, what, what did you guys think about that in that in that scene, or am I looking too deep into it? Uh, I mean, yeah, I think the show doesn't shy away from just not only racism, racism, but, you know, uh, sexism and body shaming. So I think the show hits on a yeah. lot of levels and, 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 uh, and appeases to a lot of different audiences and, and, and representing all types of characters, men and women, black and white. So, yeah, I think yeah. that there's probably some subtext within that scene. But I think more importantly, too, not only the body shaming, but also just showing that the character Ruby is kind of desperate for money at this point. Right. She was yeah. upset when she found out Letitia got the money which we find out was from Christina, but she was also, she got the offer from William. If she was working, she probably would have said, no, I'm not taking your offer. I don't need anything being, being given to me. But at this point, she, she, she's not be able to get a, a job. She's doing these dead end, um, you know, uh, performances at the bar and singing. I don't know if she's making money off that. Cause she was just like, Oh, you guys don't like it with well, the F you guys. So yeah. I think she's, yeah. she's kind of like, 
it's whatever at this point. So she's just, you know, it, it also shows that she's just willing. She needs a job. And I think that that, that was a, mm -hmm. another moment within that scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a that was kind of a sad awakening when, um, you know, she, I, I saw her singing there and no, there's like no stage. There's nothing like it's just mm -hmm. kind of her just sitting at a table in the plane and then no, no applause or anything reaction at the end. Yeah. She's like, well, mm -hmm. fuck you guys. And I was right. like, damn, that's, that's yeah. tough, man. Cause I've been there like yeah. at gigs for like yeah. doing music and stuff. I, I do. I'm sure uh, Q, you know, exactly when it's like yeah. either playing yeah. for an empty crowd or it, it's mm -hmm. a tough feeling, man. And, yeah. it's, and that ukulele oh. sounded horrible. <laughs> Whatever she was playing, it sounded it sounded really bad. Like bam, 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 like that. Dog, put back on yeah. reality. <laughs> <laughs> but being an entertainer, man, in those times. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so so you're still to the uh, belief, Elliot, that that Will and Christina are of the same uh, yeah, character. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. That's interesting. Mm. I, I yeah, I actually was not too. I, I didn't understand what he what he was trying to do. It, it made it seem like he was the muscle when he came, when he was beating the shit out of those uh, guys that were following Christina. He said, "Don't follow Christina again" or whatever. He just beat their ass, and I was like, "Okay, you know, maybe he's the muscle of the group. Maybe I, I don't know what's going on. Like, why is he such a mystery? You know?" And then he starts picking up on Ruby, and you know, of course, he's trying to use her to his advantage. But I was trying to like, mm -hmm. what 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 is your take, Hugh, on on the on the William character? We didn't see him since the second episode. The William character, that's that that's not the guy that looked like the guy from uh True Blood, right? The, the William I, I was like trying uh, the to... one that picks up picks up on Ruby at the bar. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The weird yeah, yeah, the weird uh Bill Skarsgård looking guy, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Him, he, has big, um, he has a big uh cleft right uh, like a uh, something going on over here with his lip, like upper lip. Mm -hmm. It looks like a cleft, but like the opposite up here on top. It was yeah. like very like <laughs> it was almost like a butt chin on the top of your lip. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, it it yeah. kind of it, it really stood out. I don't want to I don't want to make fun of anybody, but it, it kind of stood out in that. That's mm -hmm. what I yeah, oh, yeah. I, yeah, I didn't understand it too. Like, but that's why I like um, uh, Elliot's take on them. They're one and the same person, exactly. So, mm -hmm. so th th does that mean that they f the you know f themselves? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like in, in a group, they had they had sex here, right? You know, like are they the same person? I I, I, I like to elaborate on that theory because like. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking I, I'm that sure. the the scar on his chest has something to do with the spell obtaining itself and containing itself. But also, again, like I said, that spirit that we get on the ship, I think it kind of again whatever uh, potion or or magic Titus used for them to stay within that uh, ship. Maybe mm -hmm. Christina was able to manipulate that and use it on herself to again get what she needs to get done. Because as a woman during that time, even if she was white, you know, white privilege, she definitely has that, but she can't get certain things done because she's a, a woman. So oh, I think that that whole disguise, she needs Will yeah. to be the muscle to take care right. of the cops physically, to right. maneuver and finesse. Um, you know, Ruby's character. She can't sleep yeah. with Ruby if she's a woman. She sleeps with yeah. her because she's a man. So I think, and again, I think it's very critical that we have yet to see every single scene. They're not in the same scene at all. Christina right. comes out of the car, right. or William comes out of the right. car. Or Williams right. walking around the house, introducing things. So I yeah. think that they are, yeah, one of the same character. And, and maybe yeah, right. William right. was right. real at one point, and maybe she's taken his identity and hired him mm -hmm. some way, or he died. But mm -hmm. yeah, I think they're the same character. Yeah, they are very similar uh, uh, appearance wise as yeah, well. Blonde hair, yeah, blonde hair, yeah, blonde hair, kind of skin, mm -hmm. same uh, pale skin. So that's a very yeah. good theory. I, yeah, I believe that. I was thinking you was talking about Ruby and Williams. Like, I don't know how that connects. So like, oh, yeah. Say, like, <laughs> yeah, like she up there. So, but like, okay, yeah, that makes perfect sense there. Like, oh yeah, yeah, that's dope. I really love that theory. Yeah, they're definitely the same person. They drive the same car and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's, that's an interesting theory yeah let's see how it pans out but um jumping to another uh, part that i thought was interesting in the episode four guys is when um i i, I don't mean I, I would say i guess the uh, accomplice uh uh the character of tree um who he was trying to was making up a story that he had slept with letitia so he kind of mm -hmm. alludes to the fact that i believe it was him uh, in the museum that that tr um montrose is is possibly gay Mm -hmm. uh because he says that uh that he go, that he would go back you know to the to to sammy the guy that runs the bar and yeah. uh you know there's a little more than meets the eye and he kind of gives him that look like you know and then he he notices him talking to the security guard and he's like well how do you know him like he's like from the mm -hmm. bar and he's like well like you know is there is there more than just you knowing him at the bar like what and there's there's things that go on at the bar behind the bar right you know yeah, in the back right. ends of the bar back alley so what, what would you guys take on that 
Yeah, I don't think that they put that scene in episode one in there for just to be provocative. I think there was a, a reason why they showed those, you know, the man doing what he was doing in the alley. And I think it alludes to Montrose potentially being a, a, a gay character. Uh, I think of his comments about how his dad used to beat him when he was younger because, you know, he was holding the signs to the Negro baseball players coming back. But I think there was more to it. And maybe he saw the mannerisms and his son, his son in a young age. And obviously, in today's time is especially in the black community, you know, being under the cover, being undercoverly, you know, gay is, is a very predominant thing in the black community. So I think during that time, being a gay man is like on a whole nother level, especially being black. So I think it plays into his relationship with Dora and the whole thing that maybe Dora and uncle George were a thing because Dora wasn't, you know, wasn't having sex with her husband because he wasn't into women. So I think that there is a, a lot to be said there and how Montrose is looked at as Atticus was once he said, I ain't no sissy. And then once, uh, yeah. Tree or Seymour told him that he, you know, his dad might be into men. He looked at him a little bit differently, so it just adds more complexity to their relationship as a whole. Because, like, wait, you you've been beating me for joining the army, from reading these uh, Lovecraft country books, but you've been gay this whole time. So I think there's a lot to explore with that relationship and him being into men. Yeah, and it makes more it? sense too. Like that, that that uh, that might not be his dad. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Montrose might be not be his dad. It might be Uncle George for sure. Yeah, and it, explain, yeah. it also explains him being an alcoholic. He doesn't know himself. He doesn't feel comfortable in his own skin, and you know he uses alcohol to escape from reality. Right. Yeah. 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 Now jumping to uh, that big scene that we got that threw me off, man. It gave me uh, it gave me a sleepaway camp vibes, man. With uh, uh, the actress, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, Q. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The actress uh, Monique Condolari, she played Yahima, I believe that's how you pronounce it. And um, you know she was introduced when they're when they're after these uh, uh, this scroll, this kind of these pages, right? And she kind of comes to life uh, from being a corpse. That's kind of like the horror elements that we got. But obviously, she was Adam and Eve, man. Uh, what were your thoughts, Elliot, when you first saw that that scene, man, of uh, of dual of dual uh, sexes, I guess. Yeah, I know Q will probably attest to this, man. Again, the show's practical effects and that transformation was pretty yes. incredible. Like that oh. transformation and transformation last week when um, the doctors, the scientists was trying to get into Attic or Atticus's body. Oh, yeah. And like the visual effects are like incredible mm -hmm. on this show, like just mm -hmm. really well done. But yeah, I think the character... Again, um, I hope there's more to the character because, you know, indigenous people, again, we, this show is all about rep representing the black culture, but also indigenous people do not have much roles in Hollywood. So I hope they killing her yeah. off. That, that was kind of unfortunate because I want to get more from the character, but I hope that there maybe is with Montrose thinking he killed her or the cre or the spirit that the spirit can't be killed because of whatever spell Titus put on uh, the spirit. So, but no, I thought it, the transformation was incredible. And, um, you know, knowing that Montrose or Atticus is the only one that can understand her uh, or understand the, the, the entity. Um, I was thinking too, that maybe it was, especially being on a, like a pirate boat. I thought it was like, is this like a siren, like a mermaid character? Uh, especially when they, when, she, when it screams, screams so loud. Yeah. yeah. So no, very interesting character. And I hope there's more to explore with that character uh, and not yeah. just, you know, being killed off after only 10 minutes being on screen. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Yeah. 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 I thought she was uh, uh, like, she had the Jamie Lee Curtis thing. Uh, uh, the, you know, the <laughs> hermaphrodite. Yeah. The hermaphrodite. The I was like, oh. Era. Yeah, the Sierra, like, oh, she got a, she got a pee pee too. Like, oh, this, 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 is, getting, <laughs> this is getting saucy, HBO. Yeah, you never let me down, though. But like I, you I'm said, surprised. Man, uh, yeah. I'm surprised. I'm surprised nobody looked down. You know, usually the eyes they look down, like the camera will show them look down. Nobody looked down. <laughs> <laughs> they were just looking at her, but go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I said, like Elliot said, man, that was one of the uh, best transformation scenes I uh, I ever seen. You know what I'm saying? From like, I think that was they started off with like a puppet or something. Like when it came alive, with mixed with some CG, it was like ah, it was like the zombie thing. And then that, mm -hmm. they did that uh, turning panty shot around and it didn't cut, and it was it, it kept changing. Oh, of course, they yeah. they hit it by the bodies. You know, like the the people standing behind them to, you know, change the frames. But I thought that was done so well. I mean, that was like a uh, movie quality uh, effects mm -hmm. there. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, more, del Toro almost. yeah, dude, I was like, yeah. geez, that's, that's excellent. I was like, I'm at home, like clapping, like that whole scene there, the whole setup, you know, mm -hmm. with, you know, this, uh, this table in this throne room or whatever, and as soon as he took it, how that air came, I was like, yeah, it definitely gave me radiators of the uh, Lost Hours vibe, which is great.
great. I was like, oh, that's so good. This is Raiders of the Lost Art in the episode right at home. I, I I was giddy like a little kid. Like this is this is good. Yeah. And then when I seen the pee pee, yep, let's sleep away camp. I was like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, I'm cool. I mean, <laughs> we, we got everything in the show. We got gays, we got right. racism, hermaphrodites, you know what I'm saying, uh, cow monsters. I, I, anything, anything goes. So I can't, I like, I'm, I'm looking anything at the show goes. like, what's next week? What's next week? What can you give me next week? You know what I'm saying? I, I don't even know. Goblins, ghoulies. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm down for whatever this show throws me, you know? It, it was great, though. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be wild. And uh, I think it's uh, important to note, uh, mention, too, I don't think Jamie Chung was in this episode at all, either. Uh, her character, uh, so no uh, Asians popping out, a uh, little Asian girl popping out of the, <laughs> the chest of drawers like like last uh, last yeah, time, uh, cool. second I, episode. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I was going to say, um, so jumping to that ending scene, unless you guys want to uh, tap on some other ones, I was going to talk about the, uh, Montrose killing uh, the siren of, uh, mm-hmm. what was her name again? Um I forget the I forget the the woman's name. I just I just mentioned it right now. I, I, but, I got uh, a, a little quick quick yeah. question, like like a really mm-hmm. cool, really quick one. When Lenny was talking to the guy they brought along the trip, he said, "I I effed her and uh, I did you in high school." Was she just tree. making a joke? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tree. Was she making a joke yeah. or she mm-hmm. was she like lying? You know, because she her first time was supposed to be with Atticus. Well, he had uh, mentioned he had mentioned that he had hooked up with her, and uh, yeah. you know we find out that she's a virgin, so that's that can't be possibly you know it can happen. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, he he must have told her. On, yes, yeah. that was just her. Like, oh, you slapped me, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I got you. So I think it was just her okay. just being like, I heard what you said, and then you know it's not true. So yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, wait a minute. Like, okay, she better not be lying, lady. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. He goes. That's why they. That's why they call me Tree. <laughs> but but, uh yeah jumping to the ending of montrose freeman um where he does slice the neck of uh of the siren um what do you guys oh well what we think of the siren what do you guys uh think of that of that uh ending scene which ended like so abruptly i was like i literally said no because now we know that he has i already figured he had all alternative motives uh just throughout the you know at the beginning when we saw him drinking he was pouring the drink he kind of had that demonistic voice like a like a real uh growly voice from what i heard um mm-hmm. it looked like something like something has taken over him he's not who he he's not him mm-hmm. i guess is what i what i'm getting from that vibe and then we see that you know she could have a lot of knowledge they were talking about that they were going to teach her english so that she could um you know possibly translate a little better you know these papers or whatever and yeah. then he just offs her he just sliced her throat what do you guys uh, how did that leave you guys off uh before the credits well, it definitely. So to play to your your uh, your comments, David, in regards to him maybe being uh, affected by him being kidnapped and there might be a spell on him to be, you know, to get what they need from Atticus. So there could be that side of it. But then there's also the other side, like he said earlier in the episode, that Uncle George's dying wish is to protect the family. So he could just literally be slowing up Atticus. He doesn't want Atticus to get involved with this, so he kills a very important character to un- translate these words. Um, you know, he goes on this mission with them, but he doesn't want to, but he's going to go with them because he wants to protect his son. So I think there's that's the cool thing about the show is like every character is great. There's no, I mean, Atticus has his backstory that he killed that Asian woman, Letitia, mm-hmm. you know, what, what is her past? Like what's her relationship with her mother? So th- all these characters have gray areas. So I think that's what makes the show so cool. So is Montrose double crossing him is he just protecting his family we'll find out next week hopefully mm-hmm. yeah I, I really hope he's not like a a double crosser i don't think i think it's yeah like more you like you said it's something he's he's hiding you know or, or mm-hmm. he's hiding he knows something about you know what i'm saying the, the uh yeah the screamer what's her, what's her name that this you call her the uh, I think it's, uh yahima yahima y- y- yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's su- she's something very in- integral to the main uh, plot that, you know, yeah. like they-, they got some him and Uncle George must have know something. And then we got to find more out about that. Uh, yeah, like it got to come next week because you can't just leave us out on a huge cliffhanger like that. You know, yeah. they were they were they, they was figuring out how to decipher. And he was like, oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Like we have her learn English. It'd be easier to decipher, you know, than mm-hmm. the. Uh, the codex or whatever the you know so like yeah for him to just abruptly kill her uh, uh she knew some junk that's all i'm saying and um yeah you got it. even this being an anthology show they're still 
you know, leading us with breadcrumbs, leading us, um, uh, letting us continue on with the story, which I really like because we find more and more about characters, which is great, yeah. uh, especially our boy Montrose. Yeah, because he's an excellent actor. Yeah. Glad to see a lot more of him this episode. Mm. Yeah, and all the stuff that Montrose knew too about, you know, um, how did he know about, you know, certain things that had to go with the, I, I guess, the lore of of everything, and how did he know the combination that that crazy combination, by the way, yeah. which was a pretty pretty intense scene. Yeah, that whole, that even though I didn't get my horror fill too much, besides like maybe like the last part of the uh, the the episode um I, I like the adventure element of them having to cross that you know and then letty falls and then like you know it, it was very intense at certain points and that whole thing was the the panel was disintegrating you know they were walking on so you got a lot of those uh, uh indiana jones vibes uh which i could appreciate because i mean they're tying in different genres if you think about it and they're mm -hmm. uh, this is this is also a different director too I, we, we forgot to talk about uh this was victoria mahoney and i was yeah. trying to look up um uh, some of her, her works, you know, I've had a lot of TV director. work. Yeah, a lot of TV stuff. Of She's work. a TV uh, director. Yeah, that has some some pretty good credits to her name. She she also did an episode of You. Uh, that was a big show. Uh, oh wow, Power. Mm -hmm. She also directed an episode of Power, as well. So go. yeah, she does have a lot. A uh, Grey's Anatomy, um, Queen Sugar. Uh, yeah, did, did a couple uh, of things there, and uh, I like the way this episode felt, man. Once again, yeah. Even though you have different directors, the writing, it's all kind of uh, same writers, but it's like uh, everything's kind of tying in. It's feeling very fluid. And I think that's mm -hmm. something that you don't get when you get multiple directors. We were talking th about that on the week, uh, the weekly wrap up about how three you throw three different directors in there. And it's like sometimes it could be a train wreck. Right. And it just yeah. doesn't feel doesn't feel natural. But this is all feeling even though anthology like. Uh, mm -hmm. y these two last ones are, are definitely <clears throat> tying in, and I, I, I can't wait to see where it goes. Even all the weirdness aside, <laughs> I can't wait yeah. to see where all this stuff goes. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm excited yeah. for episode five. So, what are you guys' final thoughts? Uh, we're getting to that 30 minute mark. Um, right. but episode five, where do we go from here, or what do you guys want to see from here? Uh, I think that uh, the whole Hippolyta uh, and her daughter D going back to Artem is going to play a, a big part into next week's episode and, and seeing them go back and, and, and she still has that Ori, you know, what she's predicting as a uh, different solar system and has the abilities to have multiple suns and maybe parallel universes. So I think they're going to tie into that next week. And uh, I think another thing that they, you know, breadcrumbs wise, you know, Montrose did mention that there's 34 other lodges. So I wonder does each lodge have their own page of the book and, you know, and all that stuff. But I think Hippolyta is, is, I think it's going to be her episode next week. And, and the results of her going back to Artem with her daughter. Okay. Oh yeah, because yeah, that that that, that reminds me of another thing. They're going back, and it's they're going down to a sundown town, correct? Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah so yeah. like that, as the episode uh, was ending yeah. with that beautiful sunset, um, you mm. know, like uh, you know, yeah. they're going straight to the sundown town. It's like oh, yeah. you know, like they, they're going right there. Like they can't go there. There's monsters there, and there's racist. <laughs> Yeah. Really racist people there, Just like like they'll do that. But yeah, yeah. Overall, too, I agree with E, man. We gotta uh, see what's going on with um, yeah Montrose and why did he kill you know J uh, Jamie Lee Curtis? You know that that one's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I definitely so feel was, like episode episode five, man, is gonna is gonna man, it's gonna be a crazy one. Yeah, with the sun downtown, like you said. And are they going to incorporate more of the monsters? Pro possibly, man. I, uh, from the woods. I mean, it's, it's, it's 10 episodes, so it's technically uh, for TV standards. Yeah, it's the, mi the mid-season finale. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Isn't that crazy? I feel like we just started this like yesterday. Yeah, yeah. So I'm excited, guys. Um, but yeah, was there any other things that you wanted to touch on? Sorry, I don't want to rush this too much, but is there any other things you wanted to touch on for episode four that you can remember or that you wanted to talk about, get out of the way? Um, I just wanted no, to... I think we, we covered pretty much, again, um, fun episode, to say the least. It was the most uh, lighthearted episode. Again, it, it's, it wasn't as heavy as far as the racism and the monsters, mm -hmm. but I think this was one of those setup episodes, again, with Christina and Montrose and Ruby. I think it's setting the stage for, uh, like I said, a really, hopefully a really good episode five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting to mention, too, that uh, this was... I think Sundown, and I think you had mentioned this, Q, too. Sundown and this one were your favorite episodes, right, you said? Yeah, History of Violence, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, these and, two were my favorite, for sure. And the people agree, because it looks like 8.3 on IMDb for History of Violence, and a Sundown was 8.5. 
uh whitey's in the moon was uh the least yeah. rated as far yeah. like so yeah, yeah, 7.2 yeah, yeah. which i which i said i really didn't it, the pacing wise it wasn't for me and then uh holy ghost was a 7.9 so they're all getting great scores but that one uh the second one seemed to be the one that's uh lacking i guess out of them mm. yeah yeah interesting yeah. Yeah, okay, guys. For the violence. We haven't seen that one like like a good yeah like an Indiana Jones type thing in a while, and just to see yep. the African American leads in this type of uh, role was just un uh, unique and a breath of fresh air to see uh, live on screen. So mm -hmm. uh, I'll leave it yeah. at that. I'll let you close it off. I'm sorry about cutting you off. No, 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 no worries. And I just want to say real quick too, and the 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 tag the title name of a history of violence. To me, uh, the way I interpreted it was, um, I guess, the genocide uh, brought to that that woman's people, um, uh, Yahima. Uh, she was saying that uh, he did promise, you know, you'll be with your people again, and he slaughtered them, right? So I think that's where that's what I got from a history of violence. What, what do you guys think on that that tagline? Yeah. Yeah, I think all the episodes at the end is when you see the whole what the title behind the meaning of the title, whether it be Sundown, whether it be um, episode two, which is slipping my mind right now. But, Whitey's uh, on the you know, moon. Whitey's on the moon. Yeah, the whole distraction and everything. And then, you know, episode three with the haunted house, uh, you know, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. And then this one, yeah, I think this one really because Atticus even says to her, hey, I'm sorry for what happened to your people, but I don't want this to happen again to my right. people again, repeating history. So, yeah. Most definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Same thoughts, Q. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I agree. Like everyone, yeah, like every episode, like uh, basically, yeah, tell you what it is. Like, yeah, the whole, yeah, Holy Ghost Hunter House is almost telling you almost what the uh, anthology might be about. Like, once you get to the end, same with History of Violence. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely that, 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 uh, ladies, uh, people, you know, mm -hmm. at, at the mm -hmm. end, you know, to, uh, tying, tying it up about her and the History of Violence. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree, man. The show is a ride every week. It's like going to yeah. Universal Studios, you know, like <laughs> different type of rides, you know, like I'm really enjoying what I'm seeing. Yeah. Yeah. And like Elliot said, uh, next week is the mid season. Uh, do we know the episode? Do we know the name? Do you know the name off head for episode five? Uh, what Strange called? Case. Strange Case is the fifth one. Strange Case. Mm -hmm. Which I think okay. probably goes into the uh, okay. Hippolyta and in the, in the Ori. She's going to have that in a probably in a case and it's going to be a lot of strange stuff gotcha Ooh, i'm ready man i'm excited for sundays again let me know in the comments guys are you excited for episode five and what you got guys thought on our review spoiler talk uh for episode four and thank you guys so much to my you know my panel right here elliot and q man i really appreciate you guys so much and i'm gonna have all you guys' social medias down below so make sure you guys follow them but until next episode guys ne next talk we are out of here peace